Thanks for dropping in. Lately, my printers have been very busy printing treasure chests and barrel puzzle boxes. Unfortunately, they've been just as busy producing empty filament spools. While some filament manufacturers have gotten better about using recyclable materials for their spools, there are far more that aren't so ecologically friendly. So it's no surprise that the internet is full of projects that reuse these empty filament spools for drawers, desktop organizers, drawers, planters, drawers, Christmas light storage, drawers, and last but not least, drawers. So of course I've decided to make my own drawer design. Okay, it's been done, but I'm stubborn and I wanted to try out a layout that I haven't personally seen yet. This is my filament spool parts drawer. The drawers run vertically around the edge of the spool. It has 12 small bins, making it ideal for storing a larger variety of small items. At about 30 grams each, the small drawers are also ideal prints to use up the last bits of a nearly spent roll. The drawers can be completely removed, which I find pretty helpful for dumping items out. You'll see that this print has two different bin styles. I couldn't really decide between the two, so I tried out both. The first style works best with the label since it's flat, and the second style is easier to grip. There was a prototype drawer that sadly never made it past an initial print due to physics. Bonus points if you can see what stupid oversight I made when coming up with this one. The bins are held in place with these thin guide rails. Just snap them around the spool and glue it in place. If the guide rails are too large for your printer, they work just fine printed in sections. Just make sure to line up everything perfectly before gluing them in. The bins have two locks to keep everything in place, although really, a single lock should be sufficient. Each lock is printed separately and just slides right into place. I've posted this design on Thingiverse, but there's one problem. I designed this specifically for hatchbox spools, which make up most of my growing spool collection. Unless you also have hatchbox spools or spools that are very close in size, these parts won't fit. That's why next week I hope to code and release this design as an open SCAD file, which can be customized to fit any spool. I'll talk more about that in next week's video. I also plan to design a stand of some sort, something to keep a whole row of spools side by side, and also to keep them from rotating too freely. I guess I have a couple videos worth of assignments to work on. So until next week, thanks for stopping by.